All right, what's up, Bulldogs? Haven't done one of these live streams in a while, but I have John Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyle here, my good friend, uh, and he's gonna he's gonna help you guys out today. All right, he's gonna answer some questions about approach anxiety and and really help you guys to get through this. This is something that you know John is an expert in, right? He has you know probably the highest lay count of of anyone you know, in, in the industry and in dating, pick up whatever you want to uh, say, you know, the manosphere. But, um, and, and this is something, you know, I just want to say before we jump into this, which is that, you know, just because, you know, John has a, has a super high lay count doesn't mean that, you know, that's, that's what you have to do, right? That's not the only advice. That's not the only thing that's out there. If you're just looking for a girlfriend, you're just looking to, you know, meet women and get over your approach anxiety that's that's totally cool. If you're looking for something more, you're looking to, you know, rack up late counts, you could do that too. But either way, you need to have the skill of overcoming approach anxiety. And John, you know, is an expert in that. He has set up, you know, more systems, you know, methodology, uh, <laughs> method, I can't even think, say the word, but, uh, but, but basically he has no, systems in place. Yeah, he, he has systems in place for for doing all this stuff, which is which is something that I think is uh, is really good. You know, to, to be able to actually simplify things and and make things you know where where you can follow along and not a bunch of you know smoke and mirrors and, and BS type of, of stuff there. So anyway, um, welcome John. There's your super long Thanks. intro. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, the lay count he's referencing, like it's gotten pretty out of control. I mean, when I hit 150 back in the forums in January 2013, a lot of people didn't believe me. They're like, no, 150, no, there's no fucking way, blah, blah. But I've been like reporting it steadily, like in the old in the old days on blogs and, you know, giving field reports of every night with every close, uh, fast forwarding into RST Nation. And, and I was keeping track there. And then I had like 300 in a row posts on Instagram. Um, I've recorded hundreds of hours of hidden camera infield footage. I've got thousands of photos, lots of hookup situations. But I think one of the real big, you know, to show that it's true is that I had a whole bunch of, there's like Alex from Playing the Fire and other different guys in the community were part of group chats where I was literally posting every close for years. And these guys all saw this stuff. A lot of these guys have hung out with me for more than like a year or two years. And they've seen me consistently do well. But the approach that I take is... Um, a systematic one. So I come from a background where I studied computer science. I was a programmer, just like uh, John here running this channel. We were both uh, former computer programmer nerds. Then I got really into philosophy and then I got really into like cognitive science and psychology. And I ended up working as a systems engineer for Lockheed Martin. And I was playing like some pro poker on the side, but anything that has a skill game component, whether it be ballistic missile defense, poker, chess, you know, I was I was a top StarCraft player back in the day. Uh, anything where you can optimize as a skill game, I d I'm just very good at like hyper analyzing. Right. In the early days of figuring a lot of this dating system out, I was going out and, and then the next morning I'd be pacing around for hours talking to my friends about all the little details of what happened in every interaction, even the successful ones, because no interaction is run perfectly. There's always new stuff to learn and, and new adjustments to make. And so it was kind of like an evolutionary optimization uh, process and I plotted out the results and it followed an exponential curve, which is what happens when you're doing iterative optimization over time. So the amount of girls I slept with got out of control. I've had long-term relationships here and there. It's usually bisexual ones where we're having threesomes and stuff like that. And now I'm living in Brazil. I have a girlfriend I've, I've been with for two and a half years, but we have girls on like threesome rotation. I have girls on the side. I still go on it. It's like one way open just for me. She knows that I was basically like, you know, living this lifestyle before. And, but I always tell guys like, you don't need to go and fuck 1500 girls. You can just use the system and these tools to help you accomplish whatever your dating goals are. So it's just going to give you much higher probabilities. I always say everybody has a system. Everybody has, you know, a technique or, or game. You know, they have a way that they're going to run an interaction. They're going to text that they're, what they're going to run on a date, how they're going to set their online profile, how they're going to keep the girl around. Everybody has a strategy. It's just usually a very bad strategy. So my job right. is to give them a much better strategy so that they have a lot more date options. And I don't ever encourage misogyny or, or treating the women bad or anything like that. Just because you're gonna have a bunch more options doesn't mean you need to go you know, treat women better than like that. So, but then when you have a bunch of options, now you can choose from a place of abundance. Oh, this girl I have a lot of chemistry with and she's actually attractive versus, oh, I know this you know kind of average girl through a friend and she's not. Oh, your audio cut out there, John.
the YouTube is censoring you. Let's see. You're on mute now. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me now? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. I oh, shoot. It just cut out again. Uh, well, yeah, while well, John's fixing that, let's see if he's got that up. Uh, guys, yeah, so, you know, what John is saying is 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 100% correct. That's why I had him on the channel is because, you know, I I, I want you guys to be able to, uh, you know, meet the women that, that you want to meet and be able to have the options, right? It's all about optionality to me. Is, and so if you've yep. got the ability to approach women, if you have a proven system where you can, you know, attract women and if you want to close close if you want to make them into your girlfriend you know romance them bring them down that path you can do that if you have that proven system it gives you optionality so you can do what you want you know heck you can even be highly religious and use what john is telling you yep. uh, you know yeah. because because it's there's, it's, not, there's it's nothing the same thing is like it yeah. gets a bad like sometimes the way that i talk about this stuff gets a bad rep because i'm talking about conversion rates and this and that what i'm talking about is like the success of turning a match into a phone number, the success of turning a phone number into a date, the success of turning a date into a girlfriend, if you want, or like, you know, into at least a hookup and then go from there. So I'm just helping guys be more successful at every level. And then it's up to them what they want to go and do with those things. So um, it's very often that guys will come on, you know, that with little results or no results at all. And then once they plug in all the stuff by week two or three of training, they have more dates than they know what to do with. They can't fit any more girls into the schedule. And they're like, how is it so simple? But they're building off like 15 years of optimization. And a lot of this stuff right. is very straightforward. So they're just dialing into an optimized system, which is far better than, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the coaches, unfortunately, are teaching in theoretical abstract terms, a lot of woo woo feel good type stuff. And this isn't about just like feeling better about watching content. It's about actually solving the problem. So um did you want to talk about kind of some approach anxiety stuff yeah why don't, why don't we hit on on some of that so you know i mean the the basic obvious question is you know i get a lot of guys that are like i'm i'm terrified to to talk to a girl i mean what is what is the thing that they need to do like what is the way that they can get over that you know in, in summary like what what's the most effective thing they can do to get over that and, and just go out and, and talk to her yeah. So, so where that comes from, there's a brief explanation where that comes from is like the way mystery, the pickup artist mystery describes it in evolutionary biology terms is that when we were in tribes, like smaller tribes, say like 20 people, maybe 10 women, some of them were too old, some of them were children. So maybe you have like three, four options. If you were to hit on a girl that was taken, he could kill you. It was like before right. law. And if you were to hit on a girl and get rejected, you may never reproduce, which is like a genetic catastrophe. So there's it basically activate, activates your fight or flight response with it. You don't, you're not even in control of that, right? So you start to feel the adrenaline. You start to feel like, you know, your, your focus is narrowing in, but it, but it's antiquated circuitry, meaning like it's no longer applicable in the modern day. There's endless girls online and in public. You're just going to see them everywhere, right? So you don't need to get so terrified. So the best way to overcome it, I tell guys, stick to the old school three second rule, which means you have no longer than three seconds once you see yeah. a girl to go in. Also assume it's going to go well because a lot of guys, they'll, they'll first wait around and they'll, they'll start coming up with worst case scenarios. What if she has a boyfriend? What if she rejects me? What if it, I get embarrassed? What if she laughs at me or insults me or her friends don't like me? And God, you can just easily come up with all these things. All you're doing is handicapping yourself so that if you go and do take action eventually, you're going to come in with you know like a very weak approach because you're going to be expecting all these negative things. Instead, you see the girl one, two, you have to start going with those three seconds. It's on your own honor and you assume it's going to go well. And lots of times it will. But if it doesn't, you don't take it personally. And it's not the end of the world. Even like the worst case scenario, the girl telling you to fuck off or something, which is going to happen very rarely. You can still just say, oh, you know, anyways, have a, have a good night. Right. Oh, sorry. My boyfriend's here. OK, have a good night. Oh, sorry. Not interested. Have a good night. She ignores you. OK, have a good night. And so it, you should look at cold approach and approaching strangers in public it's basically like a bunch of doors with question marks on it yeah. and you're going and trying the door and sometimes they'll be receptive. Sometimes they won't. And sometimes they will be somewhere in between. And the ones that are receptive, you either can try to take them home based on their logistical situation, or you get the phone number and set it up for a date for later, but you can do this repeatedly. And there's a, a specific structure of like how you open, how you should move things forward, 
how to flirt, how to do all the different pieces. And the more things you do right, the better chances you have of the girl being interested and actually wanting to see you again. So, but that it all starts off with that approaching because most guys will unfortunately go through their lives succumbing to that fear and just say, oh, I'll do the next one or, oh, she's probably busy or like, you know, I'll wait for a better, but all they're doing is just alleviating that, that short-term discomfort, right? It's like you were to jump into a, a pool. You're like, oh, I'll do it in five minutes. I'll do it. You eventually are going to have to just jump in. And then once you jump in, it's not really a big deal. And I tell guys like, you're going to build like a positive forward momentum because as you start to get positive reactions and phone numbers and even turning into makeouts or even taking girls home sometimes, that's going to motivate you that you're able to do it. You're good enough, right? And that's the other thing is the mindset, right? And you're big on yeah. that stuff. I tell guys, think of yourself at 100 out of 100 potential. It doesn't mean you can't work on yourself and get better, but you should think that you're good enough, not better than the girls, but good enough and worthy enough for any of these girls. So when you're thinking in those terms and you're already thinking you got the girl before you go in, then the interaction no longer becomes about winning her over or gaining points or avoiding losing points. And instead, you're just vibing, having fun from a place of like not caring what you're saying. You're not trying to say and do the perfect things. A lot of guys fall into the pitfall of like trying to be the impressive guy or the funny guy or the clever guy or, you know, they want to do and say the right things. And the girl can see right through that. It comes from a place of I'm not good enough how I am, but if I present myself like this, maybe she'll like me. And they see right through that and it signifies that you don't believe you're good enough. So I tell guys, follow the three second rule, um, mm -hmm. go straight in, assume it's going to go well, and also have a game plan with a proper system of what you're going to do. And you can derive comfort from that, that lots of people have used that before and it works and it's, it's data driven and all that. So that's kind of the long explanation. And I guess that, that leads into, I'll just mention real quick, we have a virtual bootcamp this Friday and Saturday. You guys can check out in the link that he has in the description there. And that's going to be my full training of a boot camp, but we're making it like dirt cheap. So it's 27 bucks. And that's <laughs> yeah, going to give you like my full. Yeah, we're going to make it free, but we, we wanted people that like. Yeah, you got to waste time. Yeah. 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 Have like at least some, some level of minimal commitment. Um, <clears throat> but it's going to be my literally full comprehensive boot camp training. That's normally on the three day live boot camps that cost several thousand dollars. And the goal is we're trying to blow you away, <clears throat> showing you that you can get phone numbers and get positive reactions and solve your approach anxiety permanently in these two days, you know, or, or at least have a really big head start on, on fixing the problem for life. So it's hard to eliminate it, but you'll know how to manage it and deal with it. And then from there, you'll, you'll possibly want to learn the rest of the system for me. So that's kind of our motivation for making it that cheap. Uh, but all the details are on the description. And there's also a VIP option where you'll be in a telegram group with me and other coaches and we can guide you in real time with feedback when you're out doing the approaches as well. So, yep. yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. Welcome. Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys. Definitely. If you get a chance to sign up, I mean, for 27 bucks, it, it's well worth it. I mean, if you especially even if you think, oh, no, this is this is some BS or whatever. Hey, <laughs> spend 27 bucks and find out like that's that's worth it to you owe that to yourself, you know, and I'm not just trying to push this uh, because, you know, John's a friend of mine, but it's it's because, you know, a lot of you guys. The thing is, you know, and maybe you can you can relate to this, John, is like 90 percent of guys have never even cold approach a woman. <laughs> it's like so many guys don't haven't even done it one time. And it's just yeah. I can't imagine living your life, it, your whole life being a fucking coward. I mean, let's let's call it. What well, can, it you, can you remember back to the early days, though? Like I, I remember like I'd have like a sheet of openers. I'd be like on the yeah. subway in Philly. I'd have a sheet of openers, routines like this, mysteries, like 13 step process. And I would just be sitting there memorizing and like with my hands trembling and like literally wishing I could be doing anything else. Right. But as you start to see positive reactions, it, it really starts to flip the other way. As you start to see like, wow, there's a hot girl that smiled and is laughing at my jokes and is like, you know, wanting to see me again and like these kinds of things. No one can take that away from you. Right. right. You did that. You got that girl's phone number. Right. And maybe you met up on the date. Maybe you guys hooked up. And now your confidence will suddenly grow tremendously and it's going to feed into the next interactions you do. And when you hit the inevitable reactions or rejections, I should say, instead of taking them personally, just realize that's part of the game. No one can ever avoid running into rejections. Right. And, yeah. and again, one more thing on, the, on that approach anxiety thing. Mystery says just treat it like a pebble in your shoe. So you can't really eliminate it usually. Um, it's still there, but you just acknowledge it and ignore it. You don't let it, you know, you don't stop walking because there's a pebble in your shoe. So I think that's a really good analogy, but, but yeah, you're right. A lot of guys, um, unfortunately they, 
won't approach or if they do they get they don't know what to do or what to say they don't know how to properly carry themselves and and all the little details that go into it so then they can get deflated and if they go and try a bunch more and they keep getting the same reaction then they start turning to blaming their looks or blaming women or you know these different poisonous movements with red pill and black pill and big talent stuff they they start looking for support groups to kind of you know show them why where they're all failing together but almost every time it's it's lack of a of a good system so i've gotten like you know guys that were unattractive guys that were short guys that were ethnic guys that um you know you name it like i've had all types even guys in a wheelchair and once they're doing an optimized system they're pulling like during the three-day program or they're, they're getting labeled in the first couple of weeks of my my mentorship program so I, I just cannot believe any of these things because I have tons of data that says otherwise. And I'm sure you do, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's interesting, too, you know, the, the having the system. It's very much like marketing and sales. Right. I mean, it's really the, the parallel because it's the same thing. And, you know, I talk to guys all the time in my business coaching calls where we're talking about, hey, maybe you have to, like, talk to 100 leads and you're yep. moving them through a funnel and to get one close on on something like if you yep. talk to 10 leads right which is what most guys do when when they're when they're attempting to learn some kind of game or pick up and then you get 10 leads you talk to them they all reject you and you're like oh it doesn't work right in business yep. you're gonna fail because it might be a hundred might be a thousand people you need to talk to to close one one deal and so it's the yep. same thing you know guys they they get afraid they figure out they figure it doesn't work because they've just tried 10 and you know so so that's why like nailing this problem of being able to you know approach women and and like you said i think i think you're absolutely right like it's like a pebble in your shoe you, i always tell guys you're never going to get over your fear because fear is something you can't control but you can always choose to have courage and you can learn to have courage and you can learn to develop your courage muscle and that's something that i think you're really good at teaching guys how to do is to develop that courage muscle and especially when you have someone in your corner, I think that's that's the big thing too, as well, right? It's like having yep. someone that's telling you, "Hey, go and do this. This is what you need to do." It sort of gives you permission to do the things that you're afraid of. That you know, on your own, could you go out there to the bar and and you know, in some and you're you know you're supposed to do approaches. Yeah, you could, but you're not going to because you don't have someone pushing you. But if you know you're in a program like this, you've got some accountability. You're being told what to do. And then it's an assignment, a mission you need to do. You're much more likely to do it and and succeed at that. So, yep. And a whole bunch of other guys will be doing it in parallel, so that that's comforting as well. Like everybody's facing the fear together. And like like you said too, at the volume uh, point, is that I found out when I hit a thousand girls in December 2018, I realized I had about 10,000 phone numbers in my phone. So I was like, oh, it's about 10% close rate of the phone numbers that I'm getting. Right. Then when I hit 1,500 last month. I had about 15,400. It's dropped slightly below 10%, but I live with my chick and I don't close as many new ones as I was before. It's close, but you know, it's, it's slowed down slightly. Yeah. So uh, I tell guys at a high level, 10% of your phone numbers will convert. And I'm having Paul Jenka on my channel uh, tomorrow, who is a, a famous New York City day game pickup artist. And he's confirmed the 10%, right? There's yeah. guys in the space that's that, like Adam Lyons recently claimed 100% close rate. Like that's just BS, not possible. Yeah. For anyone that understands like the nature of how it works, how it's like a funnel, it's like imagine like you're doing door-to-door -door sales and like every single person bought, right? That's what he's claiming. So um, you know, that you should keep that in mind as well. And that's that's not a glamorous metric. Like, so I have to talk to 10 girls and I might close one, right? 10 phone numbers and you might close one. But when you're out, you know, meeting a whole bunch of people night after night, plus adding in your Tinder and your bumble and your hinge, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of phone numbers. And you can work them down with good text threads to set up dates, run your dates successfully. And then what comes out at the bottom is some good quality options that you can then make into a girlfriend or, or pursue even more seriously for a wife or something like that. Right. Yeah. So all this is doing is giving you the tools. I tell guys it's like a function of volume at the top and then how wide the funnel stays to the bottom is a function of your skill level. Right. And guys will get tripped up. Like if they're doing their, their uh, cold approach wrong, it's going to close towards the top. They don't even make it much past that stage. If they get a couple of phone numbers, they don't know how to text. It's going to close there and then they get, they get no dates. If they make it on a date, they can make mistakes there. And then they don't get to go back home or they get to go back home and make mistakes and don't get the, the hookup or, you know, there's all kinds of pitfalls that can happen. 
So the proper approach is to widen the funnel as much as possible by giving them good systems and strategies at every level of the way, and then diagnosing when they run into problems, how do we clear those bottlenecks? How do we expand skills and conversion rates? So I, I kind of took the whole dating game and, and made it very quantitative. Yeah. So you can measure because otherwise, you know, guys go out for a year and don't get laid and they say, I think I'm getting better. But right. if you're not getting laid, you're not getting dates, this kind of stuff. Um, what does that even mean, right? That you're getting better. So um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of a, a good way to look at it. Yeah, I really like how you systemize it because I think, you, I mean, you have to, right? Because that, that's the thing is like so many guys, like when you look at it from that approach, if you don't have some kind of a system, you're just going out there doing random stuff. And and yeah, some guys will teach you some inner game and all of these things. But if there's no practical system, it's just the same thing. Again, I could go back to marketing. It's like we can say, well, what what copy should you use or how should you advertise this thing? You don't know until you test it. And then you get yeah. the results and then, you know, right? I mean, otherwise we're guessing and, you know, as someone who's got a lot of experience can make some good guesses, but someone who doesn't can't. And, and I think one of the big problems that a lot of guys face is like you said, with that funnel is that you've got, you, you know, the average guy can get a lot of experience at the top of the funnel because yep. you can just go out and, and talk to a lot of girls. Right. But as you start yep. to get down that funnel, right, you have less and less experience because it's harder yep. and harder to get further down and so you really need yeah. someone who has a lot of experience at the lower end of the funnel to give you strategy because you just don't yep. have enough reference experiences right i mean you could yeah. get really good at talking to girls and getting phone numbers but because you could talk to a thousand girls but how many yep. of them are you getting down to that later stage where you could actually get enough experience to actually grow on your own you need someone and the, yeah and the, and the bottom guys can pound like yeah, yeah. Like, so if, like if, you, if you're bad at running dates, you're not going to really get any girls home. But if some girl does come home with you and you're bad at closing, it's just easy for it to close, cl close up. And then guys, that's where guys start to get frustrated because they go, they go and put all this work and then all the girls are telling them, well, you know, have a, you know, I don't think we're going to see each other again or I didn't feel the chemistry or I think we'd be better off friends or whatever. And that's usually because they didn't sexualize enough on the date, but they don't know that. So they'll right. go and keep making that mistake over and over and over. And eventually they'll just blame themselves or eventually they'll just blame women. But, and that's, what's so frustrating, right? For guys like yep. us to understand how it works because every guy hasn't really even tapped into most of his potential about what he can accomplish. He just doesn't know the proper steps to take and the proper system to use. And so he makes a lot of, you know, a lot of the proper ways of doing game are, are a little counterintuitive, right? Or you wouldn't right. just know that just on the surface. So guys just do what they think is going to be the best thing or what some guy on YouTube told them, which often unfortunately isn't correct or, or, or massively suboptimal. So then they just, you know, it deflates their confidence because if you're trying a lot of effort, you know, the same thing happened with fitness or, or making money, these other areas, if you're using a bad system, you're eventually going to get frustrated because you're putting in time and effort, maybe even money, and you're not seeing a return. You're not seeing an output. And then eventually guys say, well, what's the fucking point, right? This must not work for me. And, but the, you know, the companies that are still selling on these products, a lot of times will tell them, oh, you just need to, you know, do it more years, more months, whatever. And, but if you're doing an optimal system, the results will come very quick. You don't need months or you don't need years. You're, you're going to be texting the right things, running the date the right way, all these things. So you're setting yourself up for maximal odds of success. So exactly. that's the power of the power of systems. Yeah, I think a lot of guys waste too much time just listening to, you know, they geek out on all these YouTube channels and all these YouTube videos and buy every single course and program out there. And then they don't take action and they're getting so much conflicting information. They're trying yeah. to do all these different things instead of just they don't realize how simple it is that they just need a simple system. You know, in, in if, if you can implement that simple system, that's that's all you really need. And and but, you know, the reason why I think all that information is out there is because guys that are teaching this stuff that don't really have experience and, and that's one thing I'll, I'll tell you know you guys here you know one thing with john is he's legitimate right i mean he, he i don't know anyone who has more receipts than him like there's there's pretty you've, fair seen, you've seen me live you saw me live too right? <laughs> yeah I, I, I yeah i've seen john live and you know and i know already you know a lot of guys are gonna get upset by what i'm about to say now but if you see a guy that is that is saying that he's good with women and he hates women. He's full of shit, you know. Yeah, it, that's basically all the red, all the red pill guys. That's that's why yeah. I, I can't relate to that at all. Like when you when you've actually banged lots of hot chicks, you know, there's tons of amazing women in the world, yeah. and that, how the, the fact they take like this small percentage of girls that are very promiscuous or that are fucking guys over all the time, and and blow that up to be all women in general, that just turns guys confrontational and and um, resentful towards women. It's very unhealthy and not accurate either. Let me. 
Let me address this real quick from Sam. So Sam says, with all due respect, this is helpful and all, but so far it's just stuff we all know. Is this live supposed to be a marketing strategy for John's system or what? So I'll, I'll say this, right? Yes, it is, right? In the sense that this is why John's on the channel because he does have this thing coming up and I am helping him promote it. But also I'm not getting paid to promote it. I'm not getting any kind of commissions. I yeah. said no. Listen, we're giving, we're giving lots of good cold approach advice here. So like- right. You know, the, the idea is because you're not really covering a lot of dating content anymore. This is to show guys, here's how you would handle the dating side if you wanted to. So, exactly. you know, it's not a big deal if you decide to join that thing on the weekend or not. We're still trying to help you guys see what's possible in the game, know what general approach to be taking, how to get over approach anxiety, all that stuff. So I mentioned that thing on the weekend, but that's not the that's not the major focus the whole time. But Sam, I do appreciate you bringing that up because, you know, hey, you know, everyone wants to know what is the motives. And I think it's very important to be transparent with your motives. Yeah, John has has a, has, I mean, $27. It's a hell of a deal. You guys should, you know, should definitely jump on that. With that said, if you want some more information, guys, ask some questions, right? That's what we're here for. You know, ask yep. questions. John will answer questions. Yeah, ask any any yeah. questions about the game. Like, yeah. But, you know, for better or worse, I devoted basically, I'm 38 now, almost 39. Um since like my low 20s i didn't get into formal game until 2009 but i was always still trying to kind of learn it on my own before i even discovered the book the game and mystery method but for the past 15 years at least i've been like doing this stuff like around the clock it's like swiping on the apps texting i can show on on the i always show my audience that the amount of phone numbers on my phone there's like 16,000 something phone numbers my i have an android phone that just tracks that just tracks the amount of uh, contacts yeah, sixteen thousand one fifty eight. 16,158. Like, so like I've devoted, you know, for better, again, I say for better or worse, because I could have probably done a lot of other cool shit. I mean, I was working on the nuclear <laughs> missile stuff. I was, yeah. you know, I always had a good aptitude with analyzation and I think I could have made it to the top of the poker circuits if that's where I put all my time. But, you know, if we, if we face the facts, like having a beautiful woman by your side and having the ability to procure a beautiful woman that likes you for you is one of the greatest things that you can accomplish in the world. And it's kind of like the root of fulfillment and happiness. And a lot of guys are doing these other things, like they wanna make money or, or get a good body, and but ultimately to lead to more girls or to more options yeah. with girls. So I never say don't work on yourself or don't also try to build your business and your fitness and all that stuff, but also learn a dating strategy in parallel so that you know, because I'll get, there's a six foot five uh, jacked guy in my program right now, it's a virgin. And he's like, I get a little bit more attention up front, but right. he runs out of stuff to say. He doesn't know what to text. If he goes on a date, he sits there for three hours and the girl excuses herself and, and so on and so forth. And it, it doesn't magically make you understand how to do the whole process, especially if you're not naturally extroverted or naturally confident or anything like that. So those things help and they give you an advantage, but you still need to know proper strategy to move things through the process. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. And, and I'll say that, you know, what, what John said, you know, had, you know, I have a wonderful, beautiful girlfriend. You guys have probably seen on on Instagram. You know, so I, I, you know, I have received too. But, um, but you know, I I probably wouldn't had I not learned some of this stuff when I was younger and practiced this because yep. I would have probably sat there on our first date and been nervous as hell and like botch it. She'd be like, "Who is this guy?" You know what I mean? But because I was I was I was comfortable. I was comfortable. I was able to have a good conversation. I was able to more most importantly be myself. See, that's yep. the thing is because and, you know, she likes me for me because I was myself on the very first date. Why? Because I already got through all the approach anxiety stuff and all the nervousness I had experienced. And you were, and you were I, comfortable I was, in your own skin, right? Exactly. And, and most of you guys, you know, you're awesome guys, right? Especially you guys that are in this that are in my in my community because you guys are working on yourself. You're developing yourself. You're building businesses. You're building your physique like you're you're reading personal development books you have to be able to let that shine. And the way that you're going to let that shine is getting over this approach anxiety, getting over the nervousness and the butterflies and having a good system and learning how to do this stuff so that when you do meet that girl that, you know, if you're looking for your dream girl, you're ready and you don't botch it because you could fuck it up and then, you know, lose her. So this, these are important things, right? We're, it doesn't mean you have to become a pickup artist, but you do need to learn these skills as a man in order to, you know, to succeed in life and to get the best opportunities that, that are available to you. So, yeah. And it, and it is very rewarding too, because as you like date more women, higher quality women, et cetera, it's going to evolve your confidence. Like I said, I was the shyest guy out of 700 people in my high school. I went into college, not having even kissed a girl yet. I, I lost my virginity at the end of my first year of college to a girl that wasn't very attractive. 
I went into my third year of college having only been with three girls. I, I still thought like the hot girls were going to be off limits and like this and that. And as I like put more and more time and analysis into it, my results really start going up exponentially. But then you start commanding more respect with your friends. You're able to progress faster at work. Um, you know, your family treats you differently. Everybody, you're carrying yourself differently, right? You have a backbone now. You have a spine. Um, you have principles. You, you know, you you don't put up with people's crap. There's just a whole lot that comes with getting better at the game, not just yeah. getting more women and access to better women. Exactly. Yeah. What? Let's see. There's a couple of questions here. Uh, will this offer be available in the future? Is this just a one-time thing? So uh, this is the first time we're doing this. We're doing it's a, a virtual boot camp. You're getting all the same content that's on the three-day boot camps uh, live. But uh, we're going to be running these every so often. I'm not sure when the next one will be, but this is kind of like a test run to see how it goes. And we've put a ton of time preparing this, so it's gonna. We're just the goal is just like blow people away with value. So for like 27 bucks, you'll be leveraging 15 years of optimizations for doing all of night game and bars and clubs and all of day game on the streets, malls, and cafes. So it, it, there's like nothing held back. We're not like watering it down or anything because it's 27 yeah. bucks. The goal is to like really show people that look, I can get you getting successful approaches, getting numbers, and probably even taking girls home. That's gonna happen a bunch too on this program. Uh, on the first day, on yeah. the second day, like dispelling the myth that you need months or years of, of practice and uh, trying to figure it out. That's mostly, as you said, it's like a, a marketing ploy for a lot of companies to kind of dangle a carrot in front of your face and, and you're never really going to get the carrot or you're on the hamster wheel. Right. You're like, yeah, man, you're, you're doing good. But I've, I've always been confused what that means if the guy's still not getting results, that they're getting better. Exactly. Right? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a crazy offer too. I mean, I looked at your your page. Like, if you guys haven't checked it out, click the link. Even if you just want to check out his crazy awesome sales page and offer, you know, if you're a fan <laughs> of Alex Hermosi, you know, he talk Alex Hermosi talks about making like an mm -hmm. offer that's so good that someone would have to be an idiot to refuse it, and that's what it looks like to me. It's like well, so I much would, value for that price. So I, I have like a whole. I brought on like a marketing partner like nine months ago or something like that, and um, yeah, he, his whole passion is helping as much guys as possible. And he's kind of like my equivalent in the marketing space. Like he knows how to do the whole, all the processes just yeah. to get my message yeah. out to more guys, to help more guys. But when he was like, we're going to do this for 27 bucks, this is literally, imagine you spent 15 years of almost all your free time on something and like <laughs> yeah. the end result of it. It's almost like someone pirating my court. It feels like, you know, right, it exactly. Like my court. But, you know, the whole idea is like, we're going to make believers out of it because there's some yeah. people that are skeptical because a lot of the industry is, is, it's, you know, it's been like, and, and, yeah. And it's not just like you said, all the contradictory information, but there's also like massive information overload. Yeah. There's all this, like you said, making it simple. One of my products is called Occam's Razor because that term in philosophy means the, the best solution is to make something as simple as possible, but no simpler. So right. it's not that you simplify it to the point of, of losing key uh, pieces of the methodology. You just cut all the fat, you trim all the fat, so to speak. You get rid of all the superfluous information and superfluous concepts. And then it's all laid out systematically in a way that's very easy to assimilate and also prioritized, you know, so, so you can make sense of the information and actually implement it rather than, you know, I've, I've seen too many clients that, that, you know, bounce around from company to company and they're in the club and they're trying to think of like a hundred things at once. And it's, you know, it's, it's too hard to run an interaction in real time when you're all bogged down mentally about all these little fancy things you should be saying and doing that don't work anyways. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's funny too, like, you know, just, as, you know, I obviously I've seen John in action, but I also seen a lot of other high level quote dating coaches in action. I've gone out with these, these guys and man, back in the day, i never saw it. I hardly saw any of them approach and I did not see any kind of like, they don't, unfortunately, a lot of the guys don't know what they're doing. I'm not going to name names here because I don't want to call people out, yeah. but it, you know, I think that they want to believe that they know what they're doing. You know, I think it's an ego thing, but they they are just as clueless as a lot of you guys are. <laughs> and, and and it's unfortunate. And you yeah. can see it when they go out. You know, it's, it's the thing is like you, you can see it. So it's it's unfortunate. And and the biggest indicator, too, is, you know, I, I see these guys and they don't approach. And it's so they're afraid to approach, right? They're pretending. What did you see the first time? The first time you saw me in Vegas, what tell me? It was me just what you like saw. boom, 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 just straight to you know every single girl that you saw is just immediate, like you know three second rule, like you said, boom, 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 right? Because that and that's how I know because I know that someone that does that is going to get results. Like and if you guys become someone who does that, you will get results. It's it's you know you're going to get fast results if you have a really good system. But anyone who has that level of dedication is is doing that is going to get results for sure. So. 
Um, let me see here. There's a couple of questions here. Uh, okay. Someone said let's, they want us to talk about choosing signals when girls are passing by on the street. What's your thought? I don't know if we ever talked about choosing signals. What do you think about no, that? No, no, we haven't discussed. I, I've talked in a few videos uh, criticizing, and I, th I think that that's yeah. a, a terrible um, metric. Like, like what they're doing is they're basically like, and we talked about running volume. It's right. like, here's all the girls that you'll see. Here's like all the girls that are going to like expressly stare at you or show you some kind of interest. All choosing signals is just – uh, sustained eye contact or like she smiles at you. It's basically an old school indicator of interest in the game. So yes, you should approach in those cases, but yes, you should also approach in all the cases where you didn't get a choosing signal. Right. Um, you know, right. given that the girl's attractive enough and that you're not late for somewhere extenuating ex circumstances, but uh, there's tons of times where the girl doesn't even notice you. So what I don't like is a lot of these right. creators tell guys don't approach unless you get a choosing signal. And that's just, kind of nonsensical to me because lots of times the girl doesn't even see you like you're not even in her exactly. field of vision right yeah. so and you don't know until you go up and talk to her if she's interested or not so you know yes approach when the girl is giving you sustained eye contact or smiling or you know fixing her hair or whatever while she's looking at you but also approach the rest of the times right and don't don't just stand there like at a bar or club waiting for a girl to stare at you i think that's that's a mistake yeah the other problem i have with the choosing signals too is that i think it it only applies to guys that would be good enough looking for women to give them choosing signals, which is not a lot of guys because women are extremely picky as far as looks go. And then, and then second of all, the girl, it also filters out the girls that are extremely attractive because those girls are not looking at guys. They don't need yeah. to, <laughs> they're getting already, yep. they don't want to make eye contact with guys because they're already getting bombarded with, with guys. So you're like getting the lesser quality of, of girls and then you're filtering yourself out where you could be an average looking guy and have a girl be very attracted to you when you actually approach her and she gets to know you and yeah. you're flirting with her. But if you're just saying, Oh no, I'm only going to, you know, and I think that a lot of guys, they use choosing signals as a cope because they're afraid, right? And that, so yep. they're like, they try to say, oh, yeah. it's weak to go in. There's a the pretty pot. girl. Uh, I'm scared. She didn't look at me yet. I can, right. I get a free pass here, right? But that's why it's so popular too. I think that the guys that <laughs> say choosing signals, they, I, I don't think they actually really believe it. I think the guys that teach that, they know that they're audience will like it because it gives them a way to not face their fears and to, f to yep. feel better about themselves. Because if I say choosing signals don't exist, a lot of you guys are having gut reactions right now. And you're like, you're full of shit. You're blah, blah, blah. And you, if you really examine deeply, why do you feel that way? It's because I'm threatening you because it's making you feel inadequate because you realize that you have a fear that you haven't overcome. And me calling that out, you know, you'd like to hide behind the choosing. And I get it. I understand it. I, I hid behind it at one point. But, you know, guys like John are going to help you to plow through that. And then you'll be on the other side of it. And you'll call the, all the people that talk about choosing signals, you know, bullshit, because you'll know that you can get past it. And you don't have to hide behind that anymore. So that's what yeah. we really want to help you guys do. Yeah. And, what, and what's frustrating is a lot of these creators are telling you guys to, like, choke off your lead acquisition. Remember, we talked at the top of the funnel. It's like, those are the girls you're meeting, the phone numbers you're collecting. If you're waiting for choosing signals, that gets cut way down. And then now good luck getting to the bottom because now you're going to lose girls over text, lose girls on dates sometimes. And now you're left with nothing, right? Or, or, very, or very little, much less than you could have had. There's other creators telling you delete Tinder. Tinder just has low quality girls. Well, the, the reality is a lot of girls, well, I mean, every girl on Tinder is also in real life, right? So, right. <laughs> yeah. I, I always like found that a little strange. But then the, there's other creators, you know, guys like Hams or whatever that say don't go to clubs because clubs have just low quality women. But again, all that he's doing is like choking off your, your lead acquisition. It's like in a sales job, imagine you had like a sales meeting and everybody's about to go out and do knocking doors and, and acquiring leads. And you say, actually, uh, you know, we're not going to knock doors. We're going to wait for people to like call into the office. Right. They want exactly. to, right? And it's like, it's like, okay. And, and that's easier for guys. They don't have to go and like knock on a stranger's door, but your results are going to get cut down to almost nothing. And, and guys exactly. don't realize that part. You know, these, there's creators that are actively making them like be out of the running for having a chance at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me see here. Another question here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Tony, Troy said, if you get the premium version, are the videos and calls safe for viewing at any time? So, okay. So the, the general mission thing for this two-day event we're having on the weekend uh, it's 27 bucks. And then for an additional 97 upgrade, you get VIP, 
and you get uh, lifetime access to the event recordings. And you, the general admission gets 30 days access. For VIP, you get lifetime access. And the VIP gets access to the Telegram group where I can help you in real time while you're out doing the cold approach over those two nights. And you get a bonus third day and there's live Q&A sessions. It's all explained on the, on the site, but there's all kinds of stuff. We're giving you my whole day game masterclass training plus 30 day game infields to keep for life. So yeah, the VIP gets you know tons of extra stuff. And again, it's dirt cheap, right? It's like, yeah my life's work for under 100 bucks <laughs> you know but yeah it's, guys go, go check it out if you want to get more info on that page at least click the link and, and take a look and see and if it's not for you it's not for you it's fine but but take a look you all yourself to at least click the link and take a uh, you know take a look at it uh matt says i'm old 44 you're not old i'm 42 dude so uh helpful <laughs> tips in your program yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna be 39 in a, in a few months so I've, I've taught a lot of guys over the years in their 40s or 50s or 60s I've had a 72 year old recently in my uh, earlier this year in my eight week program and he actually banged an 18 year old and, and all the guys in the program yeah. were like shocked because so there's guys that are like 40 being like well i can't bang the girls in their 20s anymore and this 72 year old banged an 18 year old and i was yeah. like dude that's inspirational even for me because like i'm not gonna ever give a shit like i think technology is going to change and virtual sex will come in soon enough and yeah. all this the paradigms will shift but you know in the old in the old paradigms like the last generations there's nothing that precludes you from sleeping with younger chicks. A lot of chicks actually prefer older guys. 100%. I've talked to a lot of chicks that, that prefer the guy to be over 30 or even over 40 in some cases because he's more independent. Mm -hmm. He's more worldly. He has a stronger presence about him, right? A lot of these guys, their age, like in their low 20s or whatever, they don't have a, you know, a good job yet. They're maybe living at home or you know, maybe just drinking and, and watching porn and playing video games. You know, it's just stuff that's not like the most attractive to girls. So I always tell my older clients this, and, and I, trust me, I get, they usually come on and say, hey, I can't get younger girls just because I'm this age now. And I say, no, 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 that's not true. There's going to be some girls that have a problem with it, but there's tons of others that won't. So right. just treat it like a non-issue. And if a girl has an issue with it, that's fine. Move on. And the 70, people in the group that were like asking the 72-year-old, they're like, what do you say if people ask your age? He's like, I look at them and I say, I'm old as fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's how you go. I was like, that's a great answer, it's right? Confident. So, yeah, yeah. But most guys are rejecting themselves. Like, say you're 44 yeah. and you think that you can't get girls in the low 20s, they're going to reject themselves before they even try, or they're going to go in like, okay, like this won't work. But hey, uh, and they're like, what? And then they're like, see, it's because I'm old, right? And right. that and comes apologetic. in all shapes and sizes. Yeah, yeah, and that comes in all shapes and sizes. Guys are hung up on their height or their yep. their ethnicity or the you know their hairline or yep. it comes in all shapes and sizes, and then they'll come in like expecting an approach and it, or expecting a rejection and it, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and so like i remember there was this like i think he was 43 or 44 um this italian guy that flew out to train with me in poland he was he's was, he was american living in california but like italian background and I mean, that's not even relevant when i said that uh but we went out to the club and we brought home an 18 and 19 year old uh university student and that like totally solved he came on the program thinking that those girls were out of his league because some girl told him at a club like a month before, like, oh, yeah. oh you're old enough to be my dad. Yeah. And so then he thought every girl thinks that. Right. I'm like, no, dude, no, no, no. And so yeah. we went out and literally took home university students in college from Polish, you know, Polish college students. And after he banned it, he was like a new man the next day, kind of like flipped the switch back. And he's like, wow. And, and I get guys in their 50s that, that like build up rotations of all these girls in their 20s and stuff like that. They're like, dude, I didn't, I didn't realize this was possible because there's, a, there's like different narratives in society and stuff like that, or just preconceived notions where guys think, oh, if you know, if I'm this age, like I'm gonna be 39 in two months, like I still bang 18 to 23 old range all the time, yeah. and and it like almost never comes up. I mean, it, first of all, I, I look young, a little younger, but um, it almost never comes up, right? And it, and if it if it's an issue with a girl here or there, it's not the end of the world. Who cares, right? And there's yeah. tons of like literally tons and and there's even this one other thing daddy and there's there's a way to game the sugar daddy side so you can weed out the girls that are looking for money or, or you know the gold digger types and all those girls by definition are already cool with dating older guys right. so you can find right. girls on there the ones that aren't like gold digging or trying to like work as escorts girls that are just looking for older dudes and that's a great lead source for older guys as well so there's still tons of options a lot of guys think that you know the time is running out or you know that they're they're fucked past a certain age and i have yet to see they don't you know the only thing that might be a little weird is if you have like a guy in his 60s like at, at the club with like a college age crowd or something like that right. and that and that's just because of like the big contrast but there's plenty of venues where there's you know an assortment of ages there's still always the online stuff and, and so on and so forth so 
it, you know, you guys shouldn't get down on themselves just because they're older, because they happen to be on the you know below average height or any any of these things. It doesn't mean they have the same advantage as a tall guy or the same advantage as a, a guy maybe that's like thirty or something like that. But you can still do very, very, very good, right? Yeah. There's still going to be tons of people that are fine with with the age that you are or how you are, just how you are. So yeah, and like I said, I'm 42. My girlfriend's 30. Right. Um, you know, I had plenty of experience, you know, as I was aging, you know, and and I think that honestly, like if you take care of yourself as a man, if you haven't, yeah. you can still restore, but you can look better when you're old. I certainly look better than when I was younger. I'm in the te- you know, peak physical shape that I've ever been, you know, and it's you know, it's better. So uh, and then also, yep. if you look historically, right, historically, it's always been that way. Like, I mean, it's only in modern times that people the same ages have gotten together. But historically, throughout history, men were 10, 15, 20 years older than the women that they uh, married. So that's it, it is biologically already built in. So, yeah, I think yep. using age and, and I think the guys that are, are older, like you said, that that don't have success they some girl says something like oh it, you're it's creepy or whatever and they like get embarrassed and they apologize instead of just rolling with it like the old guys like yeah i'm old as fuck yeah I, i'm old enough to be that. <laughs> Fine. yeah that's right i'm old enough to be your dad what are you well, doing yeah the other issue is they, they take that yeah. personally and they think that exactly. every girl is going to think that yeah and it's not the case and it's, she could just even just be shit testing them anyway so it might not it might be indicating that she is interested like I, so many guys just let it let, let this you stop them and, and you shouldn't yep my chick's about uh, to turn 32 she's turning 30 in in uh october i met uh, her when she was 20, 27. this guy blackout bass says i'm an attractive guy but i can't get any women i'm very shy and introverted what can i do That's a good one. black pill would tell you that, that there's no problem <laughs> but obviously black pill is not true so right. as i said i get lots of attractive guys or got you know traditionally attractive or guys that are muscular or even both. And that still does not help knowing how to move through the process or it, it gives a little bit of an advantage up front, right? But the guy's still gonna need to know what to do. So you have to kind of break out of the the shy and, and introversion. Like, like I said, I used to be the shyest guy my whole high school. You have to start trying to like speak up, like speak louder, become part of discussions, you know, even be like life of the party. Like, admittedly, for many years, like alcohol helped me make that transition because I was like, oh, when I drink, I like don't give a shit. I can be, you know, extremely confident. I can be extremely outgoing and this and that. So I rode that for a little bit. But then I realized like, oh, I don't I can be like that all the time. I don't even right. need to drink. A so, so I always tell guys now because I don't drink anymore. It's it's kind of like in Limitless when he when he gets off the pill and he's just yeah. like his brain is adapted. That's like how I feel now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's well, awesome. That's yeah, because so many guys you said as a crutch. So, yep. Uh, but yeah, you got you just basically have to put yourself out there and, and it'll get easier. And as you get positive reactions, it'll be easier to expect more positive reactions. And then it just kind of snowballs on itself. And your, your confidence will literally, I see it with most clients. A lot of guys start off shy and introverted, lacking confidence. And as they start getting results in the game, it just, you know, it grows pretty quickly. All right. Here's one of the biggest questions I get, which is the wrong question, guys, but I'll let John feel this one until you uh, so for, so for over a decade i've been using the opener hi i wanted to meet you real quick yeah it's direct it's not fancy gamey gimmicky and the real quick thing like takes a little bit of the pressure off so it's it's not like you know i don't i don't like think of it as a false time constraint from old school game but i guess it technically is but so i i just walked straight up looking them in the eyes speaking loud enough squaring up my body language hey i want to meet you real quick i'm john what's your name and i always shake their hand yeah right and it's a very casual direct way of opening they know you're interested because you're coming in right you don't right. need to say oh you're the most beautiful girl and you're so amazing and like shower them with compliments they know you're attracted by virtue of approaching and you also shouldn't be doing like hardcore indirect like a lot of guys are like well i want to talk to her but i'm like afraid to show my intention so i'm going to ask her directions to starbucks and then the girl just sees you as like he's interested but he's too scared to talk and so you lose some points there so just walk up it's literally that simple hey i want to meet you real quick what's your name i'm john and then you progress forward from there. So that that's what I've been using for 10 years and teaching and it works very well. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. So many guys get so worried about what am I going to say? What am I going to do? And it's like, and I think, you know, just, I mean, as guys can see just from the way that you're demonstrating that, you're saying that with the positive expectation. Like, of course, someone wants to meet you. I think a lot of guys are like, uh, I'm interrupting her. <laughs> I'm like, it's like, they're, yeah, they're they actually they're, usually they're, say what? Like, we used to train in our live programs. You'd be like, hey, can I meet real quick? And they'd be like, what? 
oh, I want to meet you. I'm John. What's your name? <laughs> like usually they say what? Cause it's like, yeah. they don't understand what you're <laughs> quite asking. All right. Let's see a couple more questions and then we'll wrap this up here. Let me see. Are you guys enjoying this? You're getting some good info here. I hope, hope you guys are. So uh, Dude, I went for 10 hours on a live stream two days ago. Yeah. It, was, it was the longest live stream I've ever done. It was fucking nuts. Well, let's see here. The sun, okay. was, the sun was rising in the background. <laughs> we don't have too many haters in here. That's good. I think that yeah. <laughs> maybe I weeded out all the haters from my audience. So nice. Uh, let's see. Well, it's hard to hit. Like, there's, there's still guys that call me a scammer or fraud, but like I always point out there's zero evidence for that. There's zero evidence that I've ever scammed right. or been a fraud or anything because it's never happened and it never will. And to the contrary, I have like endless amounts of proof of what I'm, you know, what I'm saying is, is a reality. So, but you know, there's always going to be drama and bullshit. I, and, and a lot of it more comes my way a lot more because I, I uh, critique a lot of guys approaches and in, in game showing that they're not very good. So that brings a lot of retaliation yeah yeah exactly yeah well you know that <laughs> we have a little bit difference of opinion on on that part of things but you know uh, but at, at the same time i can see your side of it because i mean a lot of these guys are i don't like to call them out by name but they are full of shit and it's it is yeah. true so you know I, yeah and we, and we get to see i'm sure you've seen enough as well like we see like the damage that's caused when the guy yeah. is waste wasted years and he's depressed or suicidal or like fully broke ready to be out on the streets or like incredibly frustrated and ready to give up on dating forever and you're like hey we can solve this problem today we can solve yeah. this problem this week like i don't care who you are we can solve this problem this week that's the that's like the, the silver lining that's what makes me keep putting out content and teaching this stuff is like each guy that i like pull out of those pits of despair because i was in those pits of despair and each guy that I pull out of that, that that goes and lives like an amazing life, I feel like that's, you know, that's that makes it all worth it. And I also like optimizing each guy's system for him. It's like a, a selfish uh, motivation because I like analyzing and optimizing. And it, it's hard to optimize mine much further, but I can take a guy that's struggling and optimize his, his and then see the results. So I live vicariously through them. This is just a weird comment. I just wonder if any of you guys believe this guy when he says something like this. Like, does someone who is actually extremely attractive need to front and hang out in a YouTube channel and post that they're attractive? I don't know. I mean, if I, <laughs> I assume that this doesn't work on girls either, if you guys are trying well, to. Well, he's Chris that. the player. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you call yourself Chris the player, too, right? It's like, <laughs> does anyone actually believe this? I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's right and I'm just full of shit, but. It might I, be I ben, ben Stiller with uh, Blue Steel. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, maybe one more or two more questions here. Oh, here's a weird one. Okay. I got a weird one. What do you do when you have already hooked up with the chick two to three different times, but she feels uncomfortable with PDA? There's a good one. Uh, so P yeah, PDA is public display of affection. Um, mm -hmm. some people are just going to have a hard rule about that for whatever reason, they don't want to be embarrassed in public or they, or they think it's not classy or whatever. Um, I would just say respect it. Like, you know, it's, it's not anything game can solve. If someone's like, I don't want to make out in front of random strangers in public ever, then I'd be like, it's fine. We won't do that. We'll make out when there aren't random strangers, you know? Yeah. So that's not that I said any wrong, anything wrong with you or your game is that's just some girls have different, you know, you're going to run into all kinds of different shapes and sizes of um, their personalities. And so I, I was just running my mentorship call and guys are like, if the girl is saying like, she never hooks up on the first date, like there's no way it's going to happen. Like, should I still try to hook up with her? I'm like, no, like, <laughs> just back off like when she tells you that like back off and just set up the next you know just still have fun and vibe with her and set up the next date right and they're like well what did i do wrong nothing you know like there's some girls that want to take things slow so it's not a big deal yeah exactly yeah i think that's good yeah yeah i i you know i think it depends too on your personal standards right i mean girl two to three times if she's your girlfriend and she's she doesn't and she's uncomfortable with pda i'm you know or she or you're serious with her i'm like no you're uh, you're gone because like if you're if you're embarrassed, you know, then you know that you're not there. She's probably not super super into you. That's you know, if if you're in a serious, but two to three times, you can't expect that. Like she doesn't want to necessarily. You know, every girl wants to be seen making out with some guy that she's only hooked up with two or three. Yeah, times. it could just be you know, like her her principles of like you know maybe she was raised like you don't you know you don't you need to look like a lady in the streets. And yeah, this and that. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh well, here's one what's the hardest part of the game that's a good question um i would say 
hardest. I, well, first of all, the most important part of the game, I would say, is lead work and converting your phone numbers into dates. Mm -hmm. um, I realized around like a thousand late count, like where are most of my results coming from? It's normally from just setting tons of dates. A lot of the coaches <clears throat> overemphasize pulling, and I still teach guys how to pull, which means take the girl home directly from the club or from a day game situation. But if you get 15 phone numbers and you set up four dates and you close three of them, that's three girls you now have in your life versus you took one girl home and maybe hooked up, maybe didn't, or you maybe took none, no girls home, right? And if you didn't get phone numbers, then you're left with nothing. So, but in terms of like the hardest part, um, just you against yourself, really. It's yourself telling you, you can't do this. You're not good enough for this girl. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not like these other cool guys. Uh, you just weren't born a model, you know, all these different negative voices. And what those things do is they, is they introduce a handicap. And then when you yeah. walk up to the girl, you're trying to market yourself. And if you don't believe in your own product, so to speak, meaning if you don't believe that you're worthwhile enough for, you know, there's a whole assortment of reasons why you might not think that, then it's going to be a very hard sell to convince her that you are. So you have to like crush that internal fear of approach. You have to crush mm -hmm. this negative self-talk about not being good enough. You have to crush like, I I'm not capable of doing these things. And as you start to see, like, like once a guy bangs an eight or bangs a nine on my program, like, look, no one can ever take that away. Like you did right. that. That's yeah. like demonstrable yeah. empirical yeah. evidence. And so like, now that you're upset here that, you know, this girl that was, that was a little less attractive flaked you remember this other girl you closed and like so and, and that's what builds your character as a man being able to face rejections face negative reactions face adversity you know rise up and better yourself and really like try to reach your full potential not just with how you carry yourself and, and the women that you bring around you but also with business and fitness and so like i really like uh john bulldog's uh message because it's uplifting it's don't succumb to this victim mindset and the, these victim pathways there's plenty of movements out there that are ready to, to welcome you with open arms where you can all bitch about women or all bitch about your looks or all you know yep. what there's so many of them and instead you can say you know i'm going to trust people that have shown me that they have expertise here that are willing to guide me i'm going to do what they say i'm going to adjust the beliefs about myself and that allow that gives you permission to be happy it gives you permission to accomplish you know things that you're actually capable of and it really snowballs instead of snowballing in the negative direction and saying, I suck, I suck, I suck. You can say, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. It doesn't need to turn into arrogance or like, you know, just this big ego thing. It's really just, I'm capable of doing these things. I did these things. I'm going to keep building on my skill sets, keep building on what I bring to the table. I, I remember in the old forums, some guy was like, don't just, you know, put on this whole persona that you're awesome. Actually be great and like try to actually level up your life in any way possible yeah. so that you bring more to the table like actually try to be the full package don't just put on like a facade you know trying to pretend and all this stuff exactly I yeah that's I absolutely that's true good. um let me see one more question real quick here amar says i am not confident cold approaching after i got one brutal rejection from a six out of ten girl a suggestion so like you got to think i like the sales analogy because if you were to do cold calling or you were to uh, knock on a door you can't ever stop the scenario of someone slamming the door and telling you to fuck off you could be the number one salesman in the world and that will still happen unless you're adam lyons uh <laughs> the 100 percent close ratio uh but i tell guys like i've done little experiments where i've been out with advanced friends and anytime i get rejected i'll send in one of my advanced friends and vice versa nine times out of ten it's the same reaction it goes to show there's just girls at the club that really have a boyfriend or husband that are really in a bad mood that are they've been approached too much and they're annoyed and they don't want to talk to anybody anymore or they're really trying to just have a girl's night and you can never stop like prevent those scenarios from running into them it just matters how you react to it so you can say oh i suck and you know this is all because of me and, and it, i'm horrible and all this or you can say no big deal so i'll, I'll leave right. you guys with this last piece of advice you want to kind of put up a brick wall and say, here's my value. I'm at 100 out of 100 potential at all times. Here's this brick wall. When I hit rejections, negative reactions, et cetera, it's hitting the brick wall. It's not dragging my confidence down. You don't, and I, and I went through periods of life like this, and it's no way to live. You don't want to let your emotions and your self-worth uh, oscillate and move based on reactions from girls or clubs or based on what someone said to you on the internet or, or based on you know, some, some person insulting you in public or whatever it may be, that doesn't define you. 
what defines right. you is what you're deriving internally and, and holding that frame. So that's one of the biggest things guys need to, to kind of get in line with and overcome. And, and we'll go in much more detail this weekend. Uh, if you guys want to look at the link and get be part of that two day live boot camp. Awesome. One one more quick thing here. I thought this is funny. What does John think about wheat waffles rated him at three out of ten? I don't know which John because we're both Johns, but it's me. I mean, he rated me that. I, I made <laughs> I, a, I made a response it, video. So isn't, so that, here's isn't a, that great? I mean, what, the, like if you get so that kind of results, and like doesn't it just prove everything you know it, must it be right? If that he defeated the, his own ideology with that statement, <laughs> right. okay? Because I have endless proof, like tons and tons, right. of, and I'm having my chick go through my Google Photos right now, which is like all the photos that ever got backed up to the cloud. And yeah. we're gonna make yeah. a page of like literally every receipt I have. Okay. And there's yeah. like thousands and thousands. And so um, the point is, is like, if I've been banging model level looking girls, stunner, loving, stunner level looking girls for over a decade, and I'm a three out of 10, that either means that the black pill is false, which black pill says looks are the, the biggest part of the equation or the only part of the equation, right. or it means not a three out of 10, but I don't think I look like a model, but he later downgraded to a two out of 10 anyways. <laughs> but and then you've seen the, and then you see one of the comments that you put up before, and there's a guy that says, "Hey, I look extremely attractive, but I'm shy and I can't get girls." Right. And by the way, as a total side note, the, the wheat waffles guy, in my response, I showed that he's literally a 19 year old living in England yeah. delivering pizzas. He's in college, so oh yeah, yeah. But but he's he's basically ruining lots of lives. I've oh, had yeah. lots of guys email me. Wheat waffles rated me a two or a four or whatever. Who cares? Yeah, and then and then what that does is they no longer ever want to talk to a girl again because exactly. one of the big mantras in the black pill, they literally say it's over, man. And so yeah. guys hear that and they're like, it's over. I'm okay. I don't look like a model or a Chad. I can never date. And then they go and live a miserable life, or or they just spend time in these forums, all making fun of each other's jaw lines and face symmetry and all this shit. And it's incredibly toxic and unproductive. So you should try to maximize your sexual market value, but then don't worry about it. Right. You can't change your height. You can't change your ethnicity. Work on your game. Work on what you bring to the table. Work on how you carry yourself. And then you'll still have an abundance of amazing options to choose from. And, you know, if some guy, you know, there's always been people that are going to want to make fun. Or we know that as creators, we've seen everything, you know, between the comments and email. There's always going to be some asshole. Like, you can never get away from that. But when when he says something like that to me people think that like it makes me upset or like right. that i'm that i'm gonna be like you know dejected and think like oh wait a second here it doesn't you know i, I understand and, and i kind of dug research into this guy and and he kind of went through some bullying and stuff like this and yeah. what he's doing is he's projecting his negative yeah. uh stuff onto the whole world and i think even possibly inciting mass shootings because there there was a guy yeah, in the uk was, yeah Professor Waffles, who was reacting mm -hmm. to a lot, a lot of Wheat Waffles content. And I went into his, his Reddit archives and he was saying, I used to be happy. I used to not care about my looks. Then I found these forums and these looks rating things. And it made him more and more and more and more miserable. And it eventually turned into something that he just couldn't stand anymore. And he, and he killed a bunch of people and killed himself. Yep. And, you know, Wheat Waffles takes no responsibility for that. But his name was in the guy's moniker. You know, it's, it's, it's not the guy's not alive anymore. It's not clear but it looks pretty bad. Um, and I, and from all the emails I get and stuff like that, there's a lot of men in pain around the world, not because it's over for them, but because some asshole told them it was over for them and they don't know exactly. any better. And that's, I know you're really passionate about taking guys out of those lowly places and, and allowing them to accomplish their potential as well. And I think you and I can relate to these guys a lot more than a lot of these other people. We, we, we weren't naturals of women. We were nerdy computer programmers, right? We have these crazy before and after photos where, where yeah, we no, thought we would just be programming computers and you know going yeah. to land parties and stuff like that if i had if we had time i would post my before a lot of people have seen my before picture but yeah no i like i agree with you john 100 percent. this is like it's such a sad thing to see these guys uh you know going down that path and, and thinking that it's over when when they're especially when their life has just begun a lot of these young guys yeah it's like they have so much potential you know they think that that people that are telling them that are bullshit trying to sell them something but guys I don't care if you even fucking buy anything from me or from John. Don't believe the bullshit. Yeah, and we and it's not. This is not our opinion. Like we have thousands of counter examples from past clients yeah. that were, by definition, average, as most people are average looking or even below average, and lots of them ended up with very stunning girls yeah. because they evolved their confidence, they evolved what they bring to the table, they learned an optimized system to bring the girls through the process, and girls are attracted to survival and replication value how the man 
shows that he can be a protector of loved ones and a leader of men and, and these other things. And, you know, looks is, I, I think, I don't say looks don't matter, but I, I just think my best assessment is it's like 15 to 20%, 10 to 20%, somewhere yeah. in that range. By my own best assessment from talking to lots of girls about this, reading all the research, all this stuff. So, you know, it's not that it doesn't matter. You guys should still try to improve your fashion and style, your fitness, um, you know, cool things that you have going on, et cetera. But don't think that because you don't look like a model that you never will have access to women at all or, or high quality women. This is simply false. Yeah. All right, John. Well, this is awesome. Yeah, great. A lot of yeah, huge value here, yeah, guys. Make sure it. you click the link. All right. You know, check it out, you know, and see, you know, 27 bucks. Fuck. You know, I'm sure you wasted 27 <laughs> bucks on 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 something that didn't give you value, and this is a huge, huge amount of value here. And My like I said, I'm not I'm not getting paid to promote this at all. Nothing, not not a dime to promote it. So, um, you know, I can tell you with 100 percent certainty that this is going to be valuable to you. So, click the link, check it out, and uh, we're going to do something on John's channel. You know, coming up here, I'll be on. So, if you will continue the conversation over there, we'll talk more about finance. And, and yep. mindset stuff over yeah, there. Yeah, because I, I get asked by guys all the time, what's our best path to make money? What's our best path to invest? And this and that. And again, in a lot of these industries, just like with fitness, with the Jay Vincent has to deal with, or that you have to deal with in the financial space, there's a lot of people just selling snake oil or just easy solutions just because people want like an easy way out. Yeah. Um, so we're, you can trust guys like myself and Bulldog and Jay Vincent to deliver optimized systematic processes that are easy to plug into and, and start seeing results quickly. So uh, that'll be really valuable for my audience to hear, you know, all your strategies regarding finances and also the mindset stuff you bring to the table as well. So awesome. Yeah. Thanks again Good for having working. me. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Check my YouTube on John Anthony lifestyle and until uh, next time guys.